Ejection car. Meanwhile, the decreased pressure on the vent side of the discharge nozzle assembly causes a lowering of the total pressure from 4 pounds to 3 and 3 quarters pounds. The greater pressure of the metered fuel, 4 and 1 quarter pounds, results in a differential across the metering head of 1 quarter pound, for the 1 quarter pound pressure differential created by the Venturi. The same ratio of pressure drop across the jet to Venturi suction applies throughout the range. Any increase or decrease in fuel inlet pressure tends to upset the balance in the various chambers in the manner already described. When this occurs, the main fuel regulator diaphragm assembly repositions to restore the balance. The mixture control, whether operated manually or automatically, compensates for enrichment at altitude by bleeding impact air pressure into chamber B, thereby increasing the pressure, decreasing the suction in chamber B. Increasing the pressure in chamber B tends to move the diaphragm and pipette valve more toward the closed position, restricting fuel flow to correspond proportionately to the decrease in air density at altitude. The idle valve and economizer jet can be combined in one assembly. The unit is controlled manually by the movement of the valve assembly. At low airflow positions, the tapered section of the valve becomes the predominant jet in the system, controlling the fuel flow for the idle range. As the valve moves to the cruise position, a straight section on the valve establishes a fixed orifice effect which controls the cruise mixture. When the valve is pulled full open by the throttle valve, the jet is pulled completely out of the seat, and the seat side becomes the controlling jet. This jet is calibrated for takeoff power mixtures. An airflow controlled power enrichment valve can also be used with this carburetor. It consists of a spring loaded, diaphragm operated metering valve. Refer to figure 2 29 for a schematic view of an airflow power enrichment valve. One side of the diaphragm is exposed to unmetered fuel pressure, and the other side to venturi suction plus spring tension. When the pressure differential across the diaphragm establishes a force strong enough to compress the spring, the valve opens and supplies an additional amount of fuel to the metered fuel circuit in addition to the fuel supplied by the main metering jet. Accelerating pump. The accelerating pump of the Stromberg PS carburetor is a spring-loaded diaphragm assembly located in the metered fuel channel with the opposite side of the diaphragm vented to the engine side of the throttle valve. With this arrangement, opening the throttle results in a rapid decrease in suction. This decrease in suction permits the spring to extend and move the accelerating pump diaphragm. The diaphragm and spring action displace the fuel in the accelerating pump and force it out the discharge nozzle. Vapor is eliminated from the top of the main fuel chamber D through a bleed hole, then through a vent line back to the main fuel tank in the aircraft. Manual Mixture Control a manual mixture control provides a means of correcting for enrichment at altitude. It consists of a needle valve and seat that form an adjustable bleed between chamber A and chamber B. The valve can be adjusted to bleed off the venturi suction to maintain the correct fuel slash air ratio as the aircraft gains altitude. Metered fuel chamber C pressure. Enrichment valve and seat assembly. Metering jet and metered fuel chamber D pressure. Power enrichment valve adjustment screw. Venturi suction chamber B pressure. Figure 2-29. Airflow power enrichment valve. 2-21. When the mixture control lever is moved to the idle cutoff position, a cam on the linkage actuates a rocker arm which moves the idle cutoff plunger inward against the release lever in chamber A. The lever compresses the regulator diaphragm spring to relieve all tension on the diaphragm between chambers A and B. This permits fuel pressure plus puppet valve spring force to close the puppet valve. Stopping the fuel flow. Placing the mixture control lever in idle cutoff also positions the mixture control needle valve off its seat and allows metering suction within the carburetor to bleed off. Fuel injection systems. The fuel injection system has many advantages over a conventional carburetor system. There is less danger of induction system icing, since the drop in temperature due to fuel vaporization takes place in or near the cylinder. Acceleration is also improved because of the positive action of the injection system. In addition, fuel injection improves fuel distribution. This reduces the overheating of individual cylinders often caused by variation in mixture due to uneven distribution. The fuel injection system also gives better fuel economy than a system in which the mixture to most cylinders must be richer than necessary so that the cylinder with the leanest mixture operates properly. Fuel injection systems vary in their details of construction, arrangement, and operation. The Bendix and Continental fuel injection systems are discussed in this section. They are described to provide an understanding of the operating principles involved. For the specific details of any one system, consult the manufacturer's instructions for the equipment involved. Bendix slash Precision Fuel Injection System The Bendix inline stem type regulator injection system, RSA, series consists of an injector, flow divider, and fuel discharge nozzle. It is a continuous flow system, which measures engine air consumption, and uses airflow forces to control fuel flow to the engine. The fuel distribution system to the individual cylinders is obtained by the use of a fuel flow divider and air bleed nozzles. Fuel injector. The fuel injector assembly consists of, 1. An airflow section, 2. A regulator section, and 3. A fuel metering section. Some fuel injectors are equipped with an automatic mixture control unit. Airflow section. The airflow consumption of the engine is measured by sensing impact pressure and venturi throat pressure in the throttle body. These pressures are vented to the two sides of an air diaphragm. A cutaway view of the airflow measuring section is shown in figure 2-30. Movement of the throttle valve causes a change in engine air consumption. 
This results in a change in the air velocity in the venturi. When airflow through the engine increases, the pressure on the left of the diaphragm is lower due to the drop in pressure at the venturi throat. Figure 2-31. As a result, the diaphragm moves to the left, opening the ball valve. Contributing to this force is the impact pressure that is picked up by the impact tubes. Figure 2-32. This pressure differential is referred to as the air metering force. This force is accomplished by channeling the impact and venturi suction pressures to opposite sides of a diaphragm. The difference between these two pressures becomes a usable force that is equal to the area of the diaphragm times the pressure difference. Figure 2-30. Got a way view of airflow measuring section. Regulator section. The regulator section consists of a fuel diaphragm that opposes the air metering force. Fuel inlet pressure is applied to one side of the fuel diaphragm, and metered fuel pressure is applied to the other side. The differential pressure across the fuel diaphragm is called the fuel metering force. The fuel pressure shown on the ball side of the fuel diaphragm is the pressure after the fuel has passed through the fuel strainer and the manual mixture control rotor plate and is referred to as metered fuel pressure. Fuel inlet pressure is applied to the opposite side of the fuel diaphragm. The ball valve attached to the fuel diaphragm controls the orifice opening and fuel flow through the forces placed on it. Figure 2-33. The distance the ball valve opens is determined by the difference between the pressures acting on the diaphragms. This difference in pressure is proportional to the airflow through the injector. Thus, the volume of airflow determines the rate of fuel flow. 2-22 Unmetered fuel pressure metering fuel pressure Throttle valve Constant head idle spring Venturi suction inlet air pressure fuel inlet pressure metered fuel pressure Line to flow divider Fuel diaphragm Ball valve air diaphragm Venturi Air inlet Impact tube Figure 2-31 Airflow section of a fuel injector Figure 2-32 Impact tubes for inlet air pressure Figure 2-33 Fuel diaphragm with ball valve attached. Under low power settings, the difference in pressure created by the venturi is insufficient to accomplish consistent regulation of the fuel. A constant head idle spring is incorporated to provide a constant fuel differential pressure. This allows an adequate final flow in the idle range. Fuel metering section. The fuel metering section is attached to the air metering section and contains an inlet fuel strainer, a manual mixture control valve, an idle valve, and the main metering jet. Figure 2-34. The idle valve is connected to the throttle valve by means of an external adjustable link. In some injector models, a power enrichment jet is also located in this section. The purpose of the fuel metering section is to meter and control the fuel flow to the flow divider. Figure 2-35 The manual mixture control valve produces full rich condition when the lever is against the rich stop and a progressively leaner mixture as the lever is moved toward idle cutoff. Both the idle speed and idle mixture may be adjusted externally to meet individual engine requirements. Flow divider the metered fuel is delivered from the fuel control unit to a pressurized flow divider. This unit keeps metered fuel under pressure. Divides fuel to the various cylinders at all engine. 2-23 Fuel strainer. Fuel inlet pressure metered fuel pressure. Fuel inlet. Metered fuel pressure. Metering jet. Unmetered fuel pressure. Idle valve lever connected to throttle lever linkage manual mixture control and idle cutoff lever. Figure 2-34 Fuel metering section of the injector. Figure 2-35 Fuel inlet and metering. Speeds and shuts off the individual nozzle lines. When the control is placed in idle cutoff. Referring to the diagram in figure 2-36. Metered fuel pressure enters the flow divider through a channel that permits fuel to pass through the inside diameter of the flow divider needle. At idle speed. The fuel pressure from the regulator must build up to overcome the spring force applied to the diaphragm and valve assembly. This moves the valve upward until fuel can pass out through the annulus of the valve to the fuel nozzle. Figure 2-37. Since the regulator meters and delivers a fixed amount of fuel to the flow divider. The valve opens only as far as necessary to pass this amount to the nozzles. At idle, the opening required is very small. The fuel for the individual cylinders is divided at idle by the flow divider. As fuel flow through the regulator is increased above idle requirements, fuel pressure builds up in the nozzle lines. This pressure fully opens the flow divider valve, and fuel distribution to the engine becomes a function of the discharge nozzles. A fuel pressure gauge, calibrated in pounds per hour fuel flow, can be used as a fuel flow meter with the Bendix RSA injection system. This gauge is connected to the flow divider and senses the pressure being applied to the discharge nozzle. This pressure is in direct proportion to the fuel flow and indicates the engine power output and fuel consumption. Fuel discharge nozzles. The fuel discharge nozzles are of the air bleed configuration. There is one nozzle for each cylinder located in the cylinder head. Figure 2-38. The nozzle outlet is directed into the intake port. Each nozzle incorporates a calibrated jet. The jet size is determined by the available fuel inlet pressure and the maximum fuel flow required by the engine. The fuel is discharged through this jet into an ambient air pressure chamber within the nozzle assembly. Before entering the individual intake valve chambers, the fuel is mixed with air to aid in atomizing the fuel. Fuel pressure. 
before the individual nozzles, is in direct proportion to fuel flow. Therefore, a simple pressure gauge can be calibrated in fuel flow in gallons per 2-24. Flow divider. Fuel nozzle. 1 per cycle. 15. Nozzle discharge pressure metered fuel pressure ambient air pressure. 10. 5. 0. 20. 25. 30. 35. 40. Nozzle pressure or pound slash hour fuel flow. Gauge. Figure 2-36. Flow divider. Figure 2-37. Flow divider cutaway. Figure 2-38. Fuel nozzle assembly. Hour and be employed as a flowmeter. Engines modified with turbo superchargers must use shrouded nozzles. By the use of an air manifold, these nozzles are vented to the injector air inlet pressure. Continental slash TCM fuel injection system. The Continental fuel injection system injects fuel into the intake valve port in each cylinder head. Figure 2-39. The system consists of a fuel injector pump, a control unit, a fuel manifold, and a fuel discharge nozzle. It is a continuous flow type, which controls fuel flow to match engine airflow. The continuous flow system permits the use of a rotary vane pump, which does not require timing to the engine. Fuel injection pump. The fuel pump is a positive displacement, rotary vane type with a splint shaft for connection to the accessory drive system of the engine. Figure 2-40, a spring-loaded. Diaphragm type relief valve is provided. The relief valve diaphragm chamber is vented to atmospheric pressure. A sectional view of a fuel injection pump is shown in Figure 2-41. Fuel enters at the swirl well of the vapor separator. Here, vapor is separated by a swirling motion, so that only liquid fuel is delivered to the pump. The vapor is drawn from the top center of the swirl well by a small pressure jet of fuel and is directed into the vapor return line. This line carries the vapor back to the fuel tank. 2-25 10 5 0 15 To aircraft gauge Manifold valve assembly 20 25 30 35 Psi 40 Metered fuel pressure Fuel control. Fuel injectors. Idle mixture adjust. Fuel return. Adjustable orifice. Inlet fuel from it done metered fuel pressure metered fuel pressure return fuel from fuel control nozzle pressure vapor return. Vapor return. Fuel pump assembly. Fuel inlet from fuel tank. Low pressure relief valve. Bypass. 15. 10. 5. 20. Idle speed stop screw. 25. 30. 35. 40. 45. 0, 50. Drain. Psi. Throttle body. Unmetered fuel pressure. Figure 2-39. Continental slash TCM fuel injection system. Vapor return. Fuel pump inlet. Engine mount flange. Low pressure relief valve. Dry bay inspection drain. Mixture control. Fuel pump outlet. Adjustable orifice. Figure 2-40. Fuel pump. 2-26. Vapor ejector. Pump assembly. Inlet. Vapor separator. Drive shaft. Relief valve assembly. Outlet. Orifice. Figure 2-41. Fuel injection pump. Ignoring the effect of altitude or ambient air conditions. The use of a positive displacement. Engine driven pump means that changes in engine speed affect total pump flow proportionally. Since the pump provides greater capacity than is required by the engine, a recirculation path is required. By arranging a calibrated orifice and relief valve in this path, the pump delivery pressure is also maintained in proportion to engine speed. These provisions assure proper pump pressure and fuel delivery for all engine operating speeds. A check valve is provided so that boost pump pressure to the system can bypass the engine-driven pump for starting. This feature also suppresses vapor formation under high ambient temperatures of the fuel, and permits use of the auxiliary pump as a source of fuel pressure in the event of engine-driven pump failure. Fuel-slash-air control unit. The function of the fuel-slash-air control assembly is to control engine air intake and to set the metered fuel pressure for proper fuel-slash-air ratio. The air throttle is mounted at the manifold inlet and its butterfly valve. Positioned by the throttle control in the aircraft, controls the flow of air to the engine. Figure 2-42. The air throttle assembly is an aluminum casting which contains the shaft and butterfly valve assembly. The casting bore size is tailored to the engine size, and no venturi or other restriction is used. Intake air. Part throttle position. Intake air. Full throttle position. Figure 2-42. Fuel air control unit. 2-27. Fuel control assembly. The fuel control body is made of bronze for best bearing action with the stainless steel valves. Its central bore contains a metering valve at one end and a mixture control valve at the other end. Each stainless steel rotary valve includes a groove which forms a fuel chamber. Fuel enters the control unit through a strainer and passes to the metering valve. Figure 2-43 This rotary valve has a cam-shaped edge on the outer part of the end face. The position of the cam at the fuel delivery port controls the fuel pass to the manifold valve and the nozzles. The fuel return port connects to the return passage of the center metering plug. The alignment of the mixture control valve with this passage determines the amount of fuel return to the fuel pump. 
by connecting the metering valve to the air throttle. The fuel flow is properly proportioned to airflow for the correct fuel slash air ratio. A control level is mounted on the mixture control valve shaft and connected to the cockpit mixture control. Fuel manifold valve. The fuel manifold valve contains a fuel inlet, a diaphragm chamber, and outlet ports for the lines to the individual nozzles. Figure 2 44. The spring loaded diaphragm operates a valve in the central bore of the body. Fuel pressure provides the force for moving the diaphragm. The diaphragm is enclosed by a cover that retains the diaphragm loading spring. When the valve is down against the lap seat in the body, the fuel lines to the cylinders are closed off. The valve is drilled for passage of fuel from the diaphragm chamber to its base, and a ball valve is installed within the valve. All incoming fuel must pass through a fine screen installed in the diaphragm chamber. From the fuel injection control valve, fuel is delivered to the fuel manifold valve, which provides a central point for dividing fuel flow to the individual cylinders. In the fuel manifold valve, a diaphragm raises or lowers a plunger valve to open or close the individual cylinder fuel supply port simultaneously. Fuel discharge nozzle. The fuel discharge nozzle is located in the cylinder head with its outlet directed into the intake port. The nozzle body contains a drilled central passage with a counterbar at each end. Figure 2-45. The lower end is used as a chamber for fuel slash air mixing before the spray leaves the nozzle. The upper bore contains a removable orifice for calibrating the nozzles. Nozzles are calibrated in several ranges, and all nozzles furnished for one engine are of the same range, and are identified by a letter stamped on the hex of the nozzle body. Drilled radial holes connect the upper counterbar with the outside of the nozzle body. These holes enter the counterbar above the orifice, and draw air through a cylindrical screen fitted over the nozzle body. A shield is press fitted on the nozzle body, and extends over the greater part of the filter screen, leaving an opening near the bottom. This provides both mechanical protection, and an abrupt change in the direction of airflow which keeps dirt and foreign material out of the nozzle interior. Carburetor Maintenance Carburetor Removal The removal procedures vary with both the type of carburetor concerned and the type of engine on which it is used. Always refer to the applicable manufacturer's technical instructions for a particular installation. Generally, the procedures are much the same, regardless of the type of carburetor concerned. Before removing a carburetor, make sure the fuel shutoff, or selector, valve is closed. Disconnect the throttle and mixture. Fuel inlet from fuel pump. Fuel inlet filter screen fuel metering plug. Fuel return to fuel pump to fuel manifold valve. Mixture control shaft throttle metering shaft. Figure 2-43. Dual fuel control assembly. 2-28. Cover and vent. Fuel valve assembly. Fuel filter screen. Low pressure. Fuel manifold body high pressure. Figure 2-44. Fuel manifold valve assembly. Protective shroud. Air inlet holes. Air screen. Cylinder pound sign 112B nozzle size. Standard nozzle 550 series cross flow cross flow IO 360 series turbocharged nozzle. Figure 2-45. Fuel discharge nozzles. 2-29. Control linkages. And acquire the throttle valve in the closed position. Disconnect the fuel inlet line and all vapor return, gauge, and primer lines. If the same carburetor is to be reinstalled, do not alter the rigging of the throttle and mixture controls. Remove the air scoop or air scoop adapter. Remove the air screens and gaskets from the carburetor. Remove the nuts and washer securing the carburetor to the engine. When removing a downdraft carburetor, use extreme care to ensure that nothing is dropped into the engine. Remove the carburetor. Immediately install a protective cover on the carburetor mounting flange of the engine to prevent small parts or foreign material from falling into the engine. When there is danger of foreign material entering open fuel lines during removal or installation of the carburetor, plug them using the proper cover fittings. Installation of carburetor. Check the carburetor for proper lock wiring before installation on an engine. Be sure that all shipping plugs have been removed from the carburetor openings. Remove the protective cover from the carburetor mounting flange on the engine. Place the carburetor mounting flange gasket in position. On some engines, Bleed passages are incorporated in the mounting pad. The gasket must be installed so that the bleed hole in the gasket is aligned with the passage in the mounting flange. Inspect the induction passages for the presence of any foreign material before installing the carburetor. As soon as the carburetor is placed in position on the engine, close and lock wire the throttle valves in the closed position until the remainder of the installation is completed. Place the carburetor deck screen, when feasible, in position to further eliminate the possibility of foreign objects entering the induction system. When installing a carburetor that uses diaphragms for controlling fuel flow, connect the fuel lines and fill the carburetor with fuel. To do this, turn on the fuel boost pump and move the mixture control from the idle cutoff position to rich position. Continue the flow until oil-free fuel flows from the drain valve. This indicates that the preservative oil has been flushed from the carburetor. Turn off the fuel flow, plug the fuel inlet and vapor vent outlet, and then allow the carburetor, filled with fuel, to stand for a minimum of 8 hours. This is necessary in order to soak the diaphragms and render them pliable to the same degree as when the unit was originally calibrated. 
Tighten the carburetor mounting bolts to the value specified in the table of torque limits in the applicable maintenance manual. Tighten and safety any other nuts and bolts incidental to the installation of the carburetor before connecting the throttle and mixture control levers. After the carburetor has been bolted to the engine, check the throttle and mixture control lever on the unit for freedom of movement before connecting the control cables or linkage. Check the vapor vent lines or return lines from the carburetor to the aircraft fuel tank for restriction. Rigging carburetor controls. Connect and adjust carburetor or fuel metering equipment throttle controls, so that full movement of the throttle is obtained from corresponding full movement of the control in the cockpit. In addition, check and adjust the throttle control linkages so that spring back on the throttle quadrant in the aircraft is equal in both the full open and full closed positions. Correct any excess play or looseness of control linkage or cables. Controls should be checked so that they go stop to stop on the carburetor. Check for complete and full travel of each control. When installing carburetors or fuel metering equipment incorporating manual type mixture controls that do not have marked positions, adjust the mixture control mechanism to provide an equal amount of spring back at both the rich and lean ends of the control quadrant in the cockpit, when the mixture control on the carburetor or fuel metering equipment is moved through the full range. Where mixture controls with detents are used, rig the control mechanism so that the designated positions on the control quadrant in the aircraft agree with the corresponding positions on the carburetor or fuel metering equipment. Controls should move freely and smoothly without binding throughout their total travel. In all cases, check the controls for proper positioning in both the advanced and retard positions. Correct excess play or looseness of control linkage or cables. Safety all controls properly to eliminate the possibility of loosening from vibration during operation. Adjusting idle mixtures. Excessively rich or lean idle mixtures result in incomplete combustion within the engine cylinder. With resultant formation of carbon deposits on the spark plugs and subsequent spark plug fouling. In addition, Excessively rich or lean idle mixtures make it necessary to taxi at high idle speeds with resultant fast taxi speeds and excessive brake wear. Each engine must have the carburetor idle mixture tailored for the particular engine and installation, if best operation is to be obtained. Engines that are properly adjusted, insofar as valve operation, cylinder compression, ignition, and carburetor idle mixture are concerned, idle at the prescribed RPM for indefinite periods without loading up, overheating, or spark plug fouling. If an engine does not respond to idle mixture adjustment with the resultant stable idling characteristics previously outlined, 2-30. Some other phase.